In this video, I'm going to cover atomic energy levels and line spectra. It's found in topic 7 of the IB Physics Syllabus, which is SL level work. There's also a bit in this video about topic 12 that we'll also cover. And that would be higher level material. Take a moment to read the success criteria of what we will cover in this video. Now, the first thing I want to point out are these spectroscopes. Now, there are fancy ones, like this one up here. Or your school probably has ones that look more like this. You can even make your own with a CD or DVD. So let me explain what's going on here. All the spectroscope is, is at this point here is where we put our eye and we aim this towards a light source. And along this side here is a diffraction grating. That allows um, the light coming in to be separated into its different colors. So in this case, it was probably looking at sunlight because you can see the full spectrum. Even with this one, we've got a diffraction grating right here and the CB can also act as a diffraction grating. So light coming in will be separated due to its wavelengths, due to interference, like you have done in topic nine of the syllabus. We're talking about diffraction gratings. Now, you don't just see this in physics, you also see this in chemistry. I've got a picture here of a spectroscope and what it's doing, it's looking at a tube here. And inside this tube is a gas and it's having a high voltage placed across it. And what happens is the um, atoms in the gas will then have their electrons excited, fall back down, which I'll be discussing later. And in the process, it gives off light. So it's not the full spectrum like I showed you in the last slide, but rather very specific wavelengths. So that light's going to come in here. It's being collimated so that only light that's being parallel is being shone at our diffraction grating. And then this arm here can actually swing around and rotate and you'll move it around and around until you see a color and you can note down the angle at which you see that color and then go back and calculate the wavelength. And from the wavelength, we'll get energy as well. So I've got here some clips that I got from the internet about different spectra that you may have seen. So if I was using the um, high voltage discharge tube with sodium, I might see a line like this. And if I'm really lucky, I might actually see that this is made up of two different wavelengths. Mercury, you can see we've got a couple. And in section 9.3, we talk about the resolving power of the diffraction gratings. Now, I've got a few other pieces that are on here. It says a green laser, solar spectrum, so this is from the sun. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, a halogen light, it's kind of interesting to point out that just because it looks like you've got white light coming from a bulb doesn't mean we have the whole spectrum of colors. For example, if you were trying to grow plants indoors, just a regular halogen or incandescent light bulb doesn't do very well. It's because it's not mimicking the type of or the wavelengths that you would normally get that the plants need. And so that's why you can find special uh, greenhouse lamps that are trying to mimic that a little closer. This is one we're going to talk about a lot, the line spectrums for hydrogen. So I mentioned in the high voltage discharge tubes that the atoms there had their electrons excited and were starting to give off light. So I'm going to talk about hydrogen, and that's what Bohr used, because hydrogen just has one electron. So we're not going to get shielding effects. We're not going to get uh, repulsion between different electrons. So our electrons normally are here in the 
the ground state. What is going to happen is if we'll have an electron down here. If it gets hit and given energy, then it's able to move up to a next level. Now, I like to think of this as an elevator. When you get in the elevator, you get off from floor one, two, three, four. I was once stuck in an elevator that tried to get me to get off on level 2.3. I wasn't so happy. Okay, so um, what could happen is um, it was hit by a photon for the, with, for the photoelectric effect, or for some reason we've got an electron that's given energy. Now, if it has energy, it could go here or here. It all depends on how much energy it's been given. Now, I've got an equation down here. It's called the Rydberg equation. Again, it's found in your data booklet. SL needs to know about the movement of electrons that I'm talking about. HL would have to do the calculations. Remember, this equation is only valid for hydrogen. So if I give an electron energy, it can become excited and move up a level. To which level will depend on the energy it's been given. So how could I do that? Well, I've just said that we could have it in the high voltage discharge tube. So we could be exciting it with high temperatures. That would be the discharge tube is bombarding with electrons or photoelectric effect having photons land on the atom. Now, as soon as it's been from the ground state up to a new level, it's excited, but it's not going to stay there. It's going to give off that energy and come back down to the ground state. And it's this difference in the energy levels from that's going to release the energy. And if you haven't realized it by now, it's going to release it in the form of a photon, which then has a certain frequency or wavelength. And that's what we're seeing as light as the color from the discharge tube. Now, if I had an electron up here on n equals 4, it might actually release enough energy to fall all the way back down to the ground state, or it might actually go to n3 or n2. It all depends on the energy of the photon that's been released. If I want to calculate that energy, so the change in energy between the two levels is hf, so f being frequency, and H being Planck's constant. And you can find that in your data booklet. Now, so far, all the pictures I showed you were like this. They were emission spectrums. So I have the electrons. I'm giving them energy. And then what I'm looking at is the electrons when they're falling back down to the ground state. So that's what hydrogen would look like if you looked at the discharge tube through the spectroscope. But I also have this one down here. Hmm. Notice how, in this case, I have a bright red line, and that same bright red line is missing here. So this is what's happening, and this is how we can get this to occur. Now, this is our spectrum coming from white light from the sun. So now if I have light, and I just have light going through my discharge tube, and I'm looking at it on this side, any of those same photons that would have been released when it went from n equals 4 down to n equals 1. Well, now as the light's passing through, those electrons are actually going from the ground state, n equals 1, up to n equals 4. So in fact, they're going to be absorbed from the spectrum. So if I'm looking at it, I'm going to see gaps anywhere at the right amounts of energy of photons that were absorbed by my gas. So this one is the absorption spectrum. Okay, so in the emission spectrum, we have the electrons falling down, releasing the photons that we see. And in the absorption spectrum, we have white light being shone on the gas, and we're looking at which ones were absorbed. Now you can see here that the same graph that we were looking at before. I just happen to have them, in this case, all ending at n equals 2. 
These just happen to give wavelengths that are in the visible, visible light range of the electromagnetic spectrum. Notice that the energy levels are getting closer and closer together as we get farther and farther away from the ground state. Eventually, up here at zero, then the electron has enough energy to actually leave, leave the atom. One last thing I would like to remind you of is notice the units of energy here are electron volts. So this idea of the electrons starting at the ground state and moving up to different levels and falling back down and giving off the light um, is the Bohr model. Now, it doesn't work in all cases. In fact, we've had to simplify it greatly. We are only talking right now about hydrogen, so that equation would not work for any other element. It also just tells us that where we're going to get different wavelengths of light, but it actually is not going to tell us why some of those wavelengths are stronger or more intense than others. And we still don't have a way to explain with this about how some of those lines, remember I told you in sodium, we would have been able to get two bands. This doesn't predict that very well. Okay, so please take a moment and reread these success criteria. I hope you can go through and say yes to all of these things. I haven't given you an example of solving problems, but you do have the Ryberg equation. And for those of you in HL, you will be able to use it.